Thanks very much, Brian, for having us, and thanks for turning out. Um, so I'm from I'm one of the co-founders of Genesis Electric, um, and we, we've got a battery uh, swap technology or exchangeable battery solution for heavy vehicles uh, for Class A prime movers is what we're focusing on. We're agnostic to technology. If we find a better technology, we'll bring it into a zero emissions vehicle. But at the moment, from an efficiency point of view, we can't find anything more efficient than battery electric because of you know we've just we've just heard what it is with hydrogen. So. Um, as you can see here, we've got uh, we've, we've converted five trucks. Uh, we've got orders for another 60 from fleets around Australia, um, with expressions of interest for about another 125 of them. So, uh, what, we, what you're seeing there is some of our test trucks that we give out to fleets to have as a trial, um, and then they can get to utilise them. The key thing that we look at is how do we utilise the existing infrastructure that's available to us right here and now? Because there's not there's a carbon debt already uh, been expensed when you've manufactured a vehicle. Uh, most people don't realise you can do 88,000 kilometres in a Tesla before you're carbon zero. Uh, that is the carbon footprint of a Tesla in production. So if you can start to reutilise vehicles and convert existing vehicles, you've already got a carbon debt that's already been accounted for in the, in, in, in the, in the manufacturing of that vehicle. Um, and the other part of it is, is understanding what the electrical grid can do and what it can handle at the moment. The biggest problem we've got with our electrical grid in Australia is it's not a grid. It's a transmission line. It's the single longest transmission line than anywhere in the world. A grid requires it to be connected in quadrants, and we don't have that. So one of the biggest problems we have is the demand that new energy, um, even, even just consuming energy in, in manufacturing, in housing estates, and those sorts of things are putting loads on the grid that it's never seen before, and the infrastructure's ageing. The biggest problem we've got with uh, battery charging system or electric vehicle charging stations is, is they put a demand on the grid for a short period of time, and so one of the things we looked at said, well, how do we solve this issue of the grid? Um, and what we came up with is uh, a battery, an exchangeable battery solution. So that basically it's about understanding the whole ecosystem and making sure that every party of the ecosystem benefits. Because if we just went and hooked up charge stations everywhere to the grid to recharge a semi charge we'd need a small, a small feed for a small township um, for, a, for a 40 minute burst on the grid. So it's just not practical to do that. Uh, what we've done is created an exchangeable battery so that we can take the energy when and where it makes sense from the grid and that allows further investment into renewables because the renewables are in production when there's no demand in the grid during the day. Whereas we create a base demand and we're not reliant on the grid to take the energy back. So trucks come in with an empty battery, you're continually taking charge from the grid. One of the things that we have is a software system that sits over the top of the ecosystem and manages all the transactions between all the parties so it allows for alternative investment within the ecosystem. So you can be a battery owner, and we manage the transaction of how your batteries hide to the fleet owner. We manage the power coming in, so that the fleet owner just gets one bill for their energy use and for the use of the battery. You can own a charge station and get paid to refill the battery as such. So it's a, it's a clever way of just being able to make sure that there is no burden put on our existing infrastructure and it complements the infrastructure that we have now. Um, we create pretty much everything that you see there is something that we build. Um, you've seen our Western Star that we've got down there. We build the conversion module, which is the, um, the electric motor that we put into the vehicle. We build our own batteries, we build our charge stations, we do the conversions on the vehicles. So it's, it, it, that, that is something that we're doing because we're proud Australians and we want to bring manufacturing back to Australia. But we also want to be at the forefront of this and lead this and have this export around the, around the world. We've got massive inquiry from New Zealand, the US and most of Europe at the moment. What you can see here is a photo of our um, 350 kilowatt motor. We're going to a 540 kilowatt motor, which is 720 horsepower, and that'll limit us to about a 380 ton gross vehicle mass. So some of the super ports that you see shifting iron ore in the Pilbara and those sorts of things, we're starting to do that for some of the major miners where we'll start to do some of their quads, but then a lot of single trail of B-double application for interstate trucks and also trucks that are operating within uh, a radius, 400 kilometer radius of capital cities. Most people think that trucks run everywhere in Australia. It's actually not true. About 80% of all trucks in Australia uh, operate within a 400 kilometre radius of a, a capital city or in point-to-point -point locations. Are we going to take our solution to a cattle cart or a Cloncurry and, and try and do that? No, it doesn't work. But um, what we're going to do is we're electrifying the highway. So we've got a project to electrify from Cairns through to Adelaide over the next five years, and we'll have the battery exchange systems up and down the highway to, to basically 
provide this service to Lionel fleets and, and townships as well too. Everyone knows the benefit of going to electricity, you get away from the price of uh, fossil fuels, uh, your maintenance and servicing. But the other side is, you know, during COVID there was a lot of issues for uh, delivery timeframes and they were struggling to get groceries into, into, um, into your supermarkets because of uh, noise restrictions and curfews. Electric vehicles take us all that away. The other side of it is improved energy security. We have about 50 million uh, petajoules of energy hit this planet in the form of solar radiation every year. Uh, we export, to put that in perspective, we export only about 22,500 petajoules of energy out of the country in our coal, gas um, exports. We import about 3,500 petajoules of energy. Well, in, in the case of understanding diesel, last year we used 32 billion litres of diesel in the country. 23% of that was in road transport. So nearly a quarter of the diesel that we import into the country, and yes, we import 95% of our diesel, um, that it, it comes from overseas. So this comes back to getting energy security for our, for, our, um, for our fleets and for our country, and also creating more investment into renewables. Um, basically what you can see, on, we've created two side batteries that go onto the vehicle, the two 310 kilowatt hour batteries. It takes about three minutes to swap the batteries, about four to 600 kilometer range for that vehicle. Um, so where we're building our charge stations and where drivers are having to take fatigue breaks as well, every uh, class A prime mover, the driver's going to take a fatigue break every five hours. So we're putting them in those locations where they're going to, and it just happens to be about every 400 kilometres from the capital city. There's some of the, uh, from our testing, that's some of the ranges and what the usage of, of the, um, your, your kilowatt per kilometre usage is of the, of the vehicle. Um, and that's with no regenerative braking in our vehicles. So with, with regenerative braking, we're seeing anywhere between a 20 to 30 percent increase in range with the harvesting the energy back into the battery. But it's dependent on what you're towing and the topography of where you're operating. It's just if you've got plenty of hills, you use energy to get up them, but you recover most of that energy to come back. Uh, we've got one operator in Perth that has a quarry that's uh, 350 metres above sea level, and it's a 35 kilometre trip into town with a 100 tonne of gravel on. Uh, they generate 83 kilowatt hours of electricity coming down and regenerative braking and they only need 63 to go back up. So they, they, they've got a net, a net gain of energy in a trip because they're going back up empty. So it's very interesting when you start to understand some of the things you can do with regenerative braking in vehicles. Um, this is uh, what we're creating is also the charge and change stations. Uh, we've we've uh, prototyped and we're going to build a robotic charge and change station. So basically what will happen is the vehicle will come in underneath the, the change rack and it'll have two um, uh, rich stacking um, uh, pallet stackers, which, you, which are in warehouses now, putting, putting pallets away robotically. So no different than putting a two-ton pallet onto the truck. Truck will drive in underneath. Driver will hop out into an unmanned area, push a button that says, I'm clear of the truck, and the batteries will be exchanged and you'll drive on. Um, what we're doing with our battery energy storage systems as well too is the large scale has 120 side batteries or 60 main batteries, which gives us about 38 megawatts of storage. So about the same size as the Tesla super battery in, in, um, in South Australia. But what we're doing is making that power re-available to the grid as well too. So we put inverters on our charge stations so that we can invert back into the grid, support it from an FCOS market, and also be able to provide power with, with our monitoring of what the vehicles are doing. We're ac accurately tracking the energy usage and then we can, whatever we don't need in vehicles that night or that day, we can put back into the grid as support. And on that note, as our batteries deplete over time, they'll become static, static battery storage systems to support the grid. So we understand that the grid's in disarray at the moment and we can see what's going on in power prices. And that's because we've allowed renewable producers to put in renewable production with no batteries. It makes no sense. And then the other side of it is we've got billionaires out there talking about closing down power stations. It creates major, dis uh, it just creates disruption in the market. Um, the reality of it is, is we've got to have renewables with battery systems and we've got to have a transition phase to transition from fossil fuel to renewables over, you know, it's going to take us 15 years. It, it, to think that we're going to do this in two years is, is not possible, but you've got to create a demand for your market and, you know, energy in trucks is one of those ways to create that demand. That's just a little bit. Diagram of how, how the truck will work and drive in underneath it. Basically, I don't know if you can see that real well from here, but basically, is a, a robotic stacker. So, 
Um, these are some of the fees that the fleet opera typically pays. So what, one of the biggest costs in a battery electric vehicle is the battery. So what we've done is said, don't, don't pay for the battery, hire the battery every time you use it, pay for the energy content. Um, one of the ways we, we do our, our system is we charge a subscription fee. And that's how we have a, we're able to do a conversion relatively cheaply for a fleet operator because we have an ongoing revenue stream. That also helps create a, a more development and, and funds more development of the electric vehicle as we go through. Just to give you a bit of an understanding on energy, uh, back when fuel was $1.75 a litre, uh, this is all based on VW, uh, VW application. You're looking at 96 cents uh, a kilometre for a diesel truck to, to operate for the energy cost. Electricity at 17 cents a kilowatt hour, you're looking at around 33 cents a kilometre. And hydrogen, the best cost we got for hydrogen was about 13 bucks a kilo. You're looking at about a dollar 18 a kilometre. And that's, you know, a, a truck using hydrogen to go uh, Brisbane to Sydney in a line of application needs about 80 kilos of hydrogen to do that leap. They can't physically store 80 kilos on the truck, but that's that's what the usage is of, of that energy. Um, electricity about 1720 kilowatt hours and diesel about 500 to 520 litres of diesel. So, when you start to understand the energy costs and the inefficiency, there's, there's a battery electric is just far superior to uh, as, a, as an energy source for, for, for trucking. That's just some of the customers that we're working with at the moment. You'll start to see these trucks roll out around Australia, but um, Osminals and Q uh, will have some of the will have one of the largest uh, electric trucks in the world, crossing at about 150 ton, towing a triple triple road train down from a copper mine down to a port, about 235 kilometres uh, each way. So, and that's that's pretty much pretty much it. All is about about Janice. If you